Welcome. Let's go ahead and take a look at a related rates problem that involves the distance of an airplane from the radar. In this instance, we have an airplane that is flying at an altitude of seven miles on a path that will take it directly over a radar tracking station. If the distance S from the radar is decreasing at a rate of 500 miles per hour, when S equals 10 miles, what is the speed of the airplane? So let's go ahead and uh, draw a sketch of this scenario to help us understand how to proceed in answering the question. So first of all, we have an airplane and a radar station. So here's my radar station and there's my radar disc and my airplane is approaching it. So there's my airplane. Okay, and the airplane is flying in a direction towards our radar station. We know that the airplane is at an altitude of seven miles. So seven miles above the ground. Um, and the distance S from the radar, so the distance of the plane from the radar is decreasing at a rate of 500 miles per hour. So the distance between the plane and the radar, we can capture this way, we'll call that S, and we know that that distance is decreasing at a rate of 500 miles per hour. That means the rate of change in distance with respect to time is negative 500 miles per hour. Now that's negative because we know that that distance is decreasing. If the distance were increasing, then that would be a positive quantity. Now to help visually, I'm going to go ahead and move my label here of the, the um, altitude of seven miles to facilitate our visualization. Now, as we think about um, this plane that's flying through the air, um, the plane is always at an altitude of seven miles. So this seven miles is a constant. It does not change. However, mm -hmm. the distance from the airplane down to the radar station is changing over time. So that's a function of time. And as the, the plane continues to fly towards the radar station, it's ground distance, so imagine the shadow of the airplane on the ground. That distance is also changing as the plane grows closer and closer to the uh, being above the radar station. So what I would like you to be able to notice here is that we've basically created a right triangle. So looking something like this, where the height of the triangle is a constant seven miles, the base of the triangle um, is the ground distance, or if I drew that up in the air, it would be the air, um, the distance in the air to being right above the radar station. That changes with time, and as the plane it gets closer and closer to the radar station. This distance between the plane and the radar station will continue to decrease until the point where the plane is directly above the radar station. So now we have this triangle. And what we want to do is we want to be able to find ds dt. And as we look at this triangle, um, we can think about what mathematical properties might be helpful in answering that question. And since we're dealing with three sides, 
of a right triangle, uh, the most obvious thing to try is to try to use the Pythagorean theorem. So we could say that x squared plus 7 squared equals s squared because that is the relationship of that right triangle via the Pythagorean theorem. Now we can take the derivative with respect to t on both sides of this equation. So derivative with respect to t on the left side of the equation equals the derivative with respect to t on the right side of the equation. And let's go ahead and find those derivatives. The derivative with respect to t of x squared is 2 times x times dx dt via the chain rule and implicit differentiation plus a derivative of 7 squared, 7 is a constant, so a derivative with respect to t is going to be a 0. And then on the right hand side we have the derivative with respect to t of s squared, so that's going to be 2s, and then because of the chain rule, ds dt. Now, what were we asked to find? We're asked to find what is the speed of the airplane. Now, the speed of the airplane is measured as it flies through the air. The speed of the airplane can be thought of as being the same as the speed of the shadow on the ground. So, when we're asked to find the speed of the airplane in terms of my diagram here, that would be dx dt. If that is a little uncomfortable for you, instead of drawing your, the triangle the way I have drawn it here, you might alternatively draw your triangle so that it looks like this, and it is standing on one of its vertices instead of sitting on its base, and if I were to draw it like this, then this base up in the air would simultaneously be x of t. So the triangle can be interpreted in either orientation. But in either case, what we're after is what is dx dt? So to solve for dx dt, let's go ahead and divide by 2x. So dx dt equals 2s divided by 2x ds dt, and we can divide out those 2's, those common factor of 2, and that's going to leave me with simply s over x ds dt. Now, I could go ahead and find dx dt provided I know what s and x and ds dt are. So let's take an inventory. What do we know? Well, we know that ds dt is negative 500 miles per hour. ds dt equals negative 500 miles per hour. Uh, what else do we know? We know the value of s we're interested in. We're interested when s is 10 miles. So the only other piece of information that we need to be able to find this rate of change is we need to know what x is. So x is going to equal something. We still don't know what that is. So that's what remains for us to find. So let's come back over here to our triangle. Uh, we know that uh, this vertical size, side is always 7 miles, and we were given the information that s should be 10. So while we know that the, this distance s changes as the plane is flying through the air, we want to take a snapshot of exactly what is happening when s is equal to 10. So if the vertical side is 7, the hypotenuse is 10, then we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the value of x. 
So what we have then is x squared plus 7 squared equals 10 squared. So x squared plus 49 equals 100. Subtracting 49 from both sides of the equation gives us an x squared equal to 51. And then taking <clears throat> the square root of both sides of the equation, we get x equals plus or minus the square root of 51. Well, since we are uh, talking about this length of a side of a triangle, the negative value does not make sense in this context. So we will only use the positive root. So x will be the square root of 51. So now we know all of the pieces of information that we need for our equation. We will replace s with 10 miles. We will replace x with fifth square root of 51. And we'll replace ds dt with the negative 500 miles per hour. So let's go ahead and do that. And so we end up with dx dt is equal to 10 miles over square root of 51 miles times negative 500 miles per hour. So if we simplify this, we find that dx dt equals negative 5,000 over the square root of 51. And if we perform our dimensional analysis with these various units, we end up with units of miles per hour which makes sense in terms of what um, the variable x represents in our diagram. So just for our reference, this is approximately negative 700 miles per hour. And so now what we need to do is interpret our work in terms of the context of the problem. And so what this is telling us <clears throat> in the context of this problem is that we need to uh, describe what the speed is. Recall that the speed is uh, the magnitude or how fast you're going. It doesn't carry information about direction. So um, while the velocity of the airplane is negative 700 miles per hour, the speed of the airplane is 700 miles per hour. So interpreting this, we have the speed of the airplane is 5,000 over the square root of 51 miles per hour, or approximately 700 miles per hour. When the airplane is 10 miles from the radar station, and that distance is decreasing at a rate of 500 miles per hour. I hope you find this helpful.